Hello and welcome to a new episode of today's Youth uh, in this edition. We will be meeting with a young Egyptian student living and studying in Germany. Amina Helmi is studying international business in Germany. She's going to be telling us about her experience living and studying abroad, meeting uh, people from a different culture and uh, adapting to a new culture and being independent. Stay tuned after the short break. Hi, Amina. Thank you for joining us here on Nile TV. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. It's our pleasure also. Uh, Amina, you're uh, studying international business. Uh, uh, would you tell me why did you choose uh, this uh, field, the uh, major field of study in specific? Mm -hmm. So before I started st studying, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to study. And I felt like studying international business would give me a wide array of options after I graduate. So I get to study a little bit of everything, a bit of marketing, a bit of business law. So uh, I felt like it would open my option, like it would give me more options after I graduate. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I, I chose a specialty of finance and accounting because um, I don't know, I just like it more. <laughs> right. Well, uh, you also have some work experience or uh, uh, internships uh, in uh, finance and marketing. Would you tell me how did you benefit out of this uh, internship program? Yeah, so um, in most German universities, I study in Germany, um, in most universities, you are required to have a six month training program. Um, mm -hmm. That's for all students. So I got the chance to do mine here at the National Training Academy in Cairo. And it was a really good experience because I got to um, put what I learned in school into reality and I got to experience the work life um, at, while I'm still a student. So that was a really nice experience for me. Um, getting to be part of uh, both departments was really cool. I got to see two different types and natures of work. So it was a really good experience as a student. So uh, you're studying in Germany. Would you tell me uh, uh, how are you benefiting of your, uh, um, ex what, uh, how did you benefit from your experience studying abroad, uh, living abroad uh, in a different culture? Uh, what is easy to adapt in this new culture? Right, so as you said, um, it's a huge learning experience when you travel abroad for university. Um, the biggest challenge I had was learning German, so because I wasn't at a German school here, so that was my biggest challenge. But you learn so much when you are exposed to different cultures, um, when you have to live on your own and you have to manage your own time, you have to basically do everything on your own, cook, clean, um, as I said before, manage your time, exams. Um, so it was a really big learning opportunity for me. Um, it was the first time I was on my own. So I got to like create that own balance for myself. Yeah. What about meeting uh, new people, different people from a different culture? How did you adapt? Was it easy to adapt? At first it was a bit difficult, of course. Um, I always found myself going to the Egyptians or the Arabs because they were like their culture is more similar to mine. Um, but then afterwards, in my university, there are so many international students. People come from everywhere in the world. So, um, it, like the freshman activities and all the activities we have on campus made that a bit easier. And now, mm -hmm. like most of my friends are either from. Um, Eastern European countries or from South American countries. So it's really cool having friends from all around the world. Mm -hmm. 
And what are you planning uh, later on when you finish, when you get your bachelor degree in international business? Uh, are you planning to come back uh, to work here in Egypt or are you planning to live abroad and work abroad? Uh, my original plan was always to come back to Egypt after I finish. If I could get a bit of working experience after I graduate in Europe or maybe somewhere else, that would also be cool. But like the long-term mm -hmm. plan is definitely to come back. Like I, I don't think I could live away from my country and family, especially my family for that long. Yeah, well, uh, and you know, also you have uh, some extracurricular activities. You participated in uh, Model United Nations. Uh, how far did you learn uh, out of this experience uh, in terms of research and uh, presentation skills? So definitely uh, doing Model United Nations was a, a very big learning opportunity for me. I did that in high school, so I was always interested in it and I was always planning on doing it when I traveled for university. Um, this year we were supposed to go to a National Model United Nations Conference in New York, but unfortunately that was cancelled due to COVID, so we didn't really make it to the part of actually going, but throughout yeah. the preparation journey we did a lot of um, discussions and simulations and like you said research we had to write um, position papers about our delegation and the topics that were at hand so it was really interesting we got to cover a lot of the recent uh, problems that we face around the world and we were representing the delegation of Rwanda so we also represented Rwanda's perspective on all the different topics that arise um, around the world. So it was really interesting. I got to make a lot of new friends. We even traveled to Berlin together for like a simulation activity where we were like having um, a mock conference or a mock debate. So yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah, so you met, uh, of course, new people through this experience. And uh, how did it add to you in terms of uh, public speaking skills? Yeah, so throughout uh, like I was saying throughout the um, simulation we had in Berlin, uh, we each had to give a speech or prepare a speech and give it. And one of the skills that they were making us work on was giving a speech without any notes or without having a paper in front of you. So you had to like write down your thoughts, prepare everything, and then go up and speak for two to three minutes without mm -hmm. any piece of paper. So that was a skill I learned throughout that, throughout that time, like speaking, um without any reference or without any notes and we all did that yeah. together and give each other feedback so that was also really cool yeah great also you participated in the uh, model arab league also right that was yeah, also that was another incredible. experience yeah so in high school we also had uh, a model united nations conference and i had the like the privilege of being the president of the arab league and um, during that time, I was the one who had to prepare the topics that the delegates were going to um, debate or talk about. I had to write like a research paper. And um, basically I was delegating the forum, like saying when you can speak now <laughs> or like delegating yeah. the forum. Yeah, it's an interesting experience actually. And in the MUN, you were uh, in the General Assembly, actually Security Council and General Assembly, right? Yeah, I was um, in, in, at university, I was, um, as I said, representing Rwanda in the third general assembly. So that was the social and cultural and humanitarian forum. And these are more of my interests. So that's why I chose that forum. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, uh, you also took part in uh, uh, the, uh, some volunteer work uh, during school years, I think. Social work, uh, like... Uh, um, uh, participating in collecting uh, food, uh, clothes, and uh, uh, money for uh, uh, donations. So how do you see the importance of uh, community participation and social work? Right, so throughout high school, that was a really big part of my experience. In my high school, they really focused on that. It was a, like a very big part of our, of our life. We, we had to do a lot of, of social work, for example, like, um, Ramadan packaging and prepare uh, meals throughout Ramadan and also throughout the Eid, like prepare gifts for children. Um, so it was a really nice experience. You get to learn a lot. You get to see a lot and you're exposed to all the different problems that we face in our society. You get to um, 
experience dealing with people of all different social classes. So it really enriches your background and it enriches your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, moving on to uh, hobbies and interests, uh, uh, you also have uh, some special hobbies. Uh, I think uh, scuba diving, uh, uh, reading, uh, traveling, uh, cooking, and uh, uh, playing tennis. And uh, tell me more about these uh, interests and hobbies. So, um, scuba diving was an interest that came up around five, six years ago. Um, I went on a diving trip with school and I, I loved it. I loved everything about it and I loved being underwater and disconnected from the entire world. So I decided then to get my uh, scuba diving license so I could dive professionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was honestly one of the best decisions I made. And every time I get the chance to go diving, it's, it's a whole new experience. Yeah. So I got that from school. Um, Reading and cooking are just some of my pastimes, especially when I traveled and I had to cook for myself. Like I got to become more creative. Uh, um, in cooking, right? Yeah. 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 And um, playing tennis is like, that's the sport I play. I train almost two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. And I love it, honestly. I feel like I get all my energy out when I'm playing. So I really yeah. like it. Right. Uh, you I mean, also uh, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> traveling was something that was um, easily attainable, especially living in Europe because everything is close by. You can travel um, using the train or the bus. It's a lot easier than um, in Egypt. Everything is closer. You can travel anywhere, anytime. So that was something I got to do a lot, and I think it's one of the biggest perks of living in Europe. Right. Uh, uh, moving on to another activity that you participated and shared in is the Ministry of uh, Immigration uh, Program for Egyptian Youth Abroad. Uh, tell me about the visits that they planned for you and uh, uh, the uh, connections and relations that you uh, were able to make with other youth. So that I mean, was... through this program. All right, of course. Um, when we, I first came back to Egypt last March, uh, because of COVID, um, everyone who came back because of COVID was a bit down during that time, like they weren't sure when they were going back. So when they contacted us, telling us about that program, and um, Minister Nabila Mokram uh, started um, planning or initiating visits for us, it was mind-blowing. It was a really cool experience, and for me, the one thing I got most out of it was making friends. I feel like when you travel abroad, you don't really get to meet as much Egyptians as other people do when you're in university here. So for me, meeting people who study everywhere around the world was really cool. We got to go on a lot of visits. So for example, we went to El Galela University and we went to El Galela City and there we saw the university. And that was yeah. a really cool trip. We had a lot of fun. We rode the Telefrik and we had lunch there. And we also got to see the university and the different majors they offer and all that. Um, we also got to go to um, Abdin Palace. Right. After they renovated. It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. Um, we've also been to different ministries like the Ministry of Information Technology and Communication. We've also been to the National Council for Women. So it was a really cool experience getting to meet high authorities in the country and getting to speak and ask questions to ministers. And uh, for example, Dr. Maya Morsi was the president of the National Council for Women. Like for us as students to get that opportunity to speak and like say our concerns and all that, it was really cool. And for me, like the most exciting part was when we got to meet uh, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, the prime minister, mm -hmm. uh, was, like we got to go and we got to um, ask him questions and any concerns we had, we got to speak up about. So it was really cool. Mm -hmm. It's a great experience, definitely meeting with uh, officials and uh, seeing uh, different uh, touristic sites here in Egypt. Maybe you haven't got the chance to see those places before, like Abdin Palace and yeah. It's a great experience, of course. I wouldn't and, and yeah, go ahead. 
I was just saying I wouldn't have gotten the chance to see it otherwise. So yes, definitely sure. Well, uh, you're currently also interning at the uh, National Training Academy, right? Yeah. Tell me more about uh, this uh, experience and how far are you uh, learning and enjoying this training? So as I was saying before, uh, in German universities, you have to intern somewhere for six months. So that's where I decided to do it. And I got the chance of trying different departments. So I did finance first and then I did marketing. Um, they have a very different nature of work. So um, finance work is very I wouldn't say rigid, but there isn't a lot of room for creativity. It's also a bit more sensitive when you're dealing with financial documents. So, but I got to learn a lot about, um, for, for example, the financial terminology in Arabic, because since my studies were always in English, so it was a really cool new learning opportunity. Yeah. Um, marketing department, I got a chance to unleash my creativity a bit more. I learned mm -hmm. uh, also about, um, like media, video production in general. So overall, it was a really nice opportunity. People there are relatively young. There is a really nice working environment. So I'm very thankful I got to do it there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so uh, definitely you're meeting a lot of obstacles and uh, challenges, uh, living alone, living abroad. Uh, uh, tell me, how uh, does each difficulty you pass through give you more strength and uh, uh, persistence and perseverance to reach your goals? Definitely my biggest challenge is <clears throat> being away from my friends and family here, um, like living on my own without my parents and my siblings. It's, it's very difficult. But um, what keeps me going honestly is every time I come back and I see them and I see how proud they are of everything I've achieved, it, it motivates me to keep going. Um, another yeah. challenge, as I said before, was um, the cultural barrier. At the end of the day, the German culture is a bit different than ours. I got to learn a lot from it, but it was hard adapting at first. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely the friends I made there and the friends I now consider my family that I made there definitely make it easier. They're always by my side. So mm -hmm. that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the role of youth uh, towards their countries? I mean, you're uh, learning abroad, you will come back to Egypt one day and you will be uh, working here. Um, what do you think is the role of youth uh, for, uh, to, to see uh, the future uh, development and sustainable development? Definitely, I feel like it's those who had the opportunity to travel abroad, it's definitely their responsibility to come back and try to implement everything they learn towards benefiting their country. Because at the end of the day, if we don't, then who will? And mm -hmm. like everything they learned um, after being on those visits and after meeting all those ministers and authority figures in Egypt, you get to see that there's room for you to implement your ideas and there's room for you to mm -hmm. like, say what you have to say about everything. There's always room for you to be more creative. So it's definitely our responsibility to try to benefit the country, even in the smallest way possible. Like even if you have a small business idea and you feel it's gonna make life a bit smoother, then it's definitely your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, do you think that the challenges facing youth around the world are the same? I mean, in other words, do youth uh, have the same common challenges all over the world? I think after meeting a lot of people throughout the events of the ministry, I would say they're um, similar. Like the, they have the, it's the same umbrella. Maybe the technicalities are a bit different, but overall, I think um, youth have the same issues of trying to find their place in the world, trying to prove themselves, uh, trying to say like, "Hey, I'm here. I have an idea, and I can do it." And just because I'm younger, it doesn't mean I can't. Um, those who definitely travel abroad have similar issues of adapting to different cultures, of being away from home, of trying like to find that balance of one while being on their own. So I think they're, even though it could definitely vary from person to person, but it's under the same umbrella, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Uh, uh, what do you think is the importance of uh, holding different events, uh, gathering youth together uh, from different places like the um, uh, conferences that took place here in Egypt, uh, youth forums, international youth forums, and so on? How important are such gatherings for the youth to, to get together, uh, to uh, change experience, uh, to create a bond among uh, youth from different cultures? I think it's, like you said, it's definitely important for their exposure. I feel like when you're exposed to more cultures and you're exposed to different people and different ideas all the time, it um, makes you a more accepting person. It makes you a more understanding person. When you've only seen the same thing your entire life, it's hard for you to adapt to people's different mentalities. And I feel like that's the strength of the youth today, that mm -hmm. everyone, especially because social media and now a lot of people are traveling abroad for education people are exposed all the time to different mentalities and that just and it enriches them as a person and it also makes them more accepting more aware um, when you're exposed to different people and cultures you're also exposed to different ideas so it broadens your circle of thinking i think it's really yes. important yeah uh, in light of this uh, if you uh see yourself before traveling and after, tra after traveling and living abroad on your own and being independent, uh, what would you say? The difference? Um, I think I'm definitely a more mature. Yeah, more mature, more responsible. Um, like, as I was saying before, I basically do everything on my own when I'm traveling. So knowing that you're capable of that i think is a is a big thing mm -hmm. um i feel like my mentality also changed a little bit um i've become more open and accepting of people mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, what would you tell youth about uh, accepting uh, the people uh, accepting the other accepting uh, different people from different cultures uh, with different uh, mentalities I would say um, definitely you don't have to accept everything on yourself, but you have to accept people the way they are. Like if a person does something differently than you or thinks about something differently than you, then you have to respect that person as a person. Maybe you, you don't want to have that these ideas or you don't have that mentality, that's fine because you're also your own person and they're their own person. You just have to respect them and give them the space to be who they are and so that they can give you the space to be who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and who is your greatest support? I mean, is it uh, your family, your mom, your dad, your friends? Who have supported you? Definitely my family. My parents and my siblings have always been my greatest support. My friends have also always been my greatest support. So I don't, honestly don't know where I'd be without them. Mm -hmm. And, and so you're back now for, um, due to the COVID, of course, uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic, you, you, work, you work online from here, from Egypt, right? You're, you're, you're so continuing your education right. online. Yeah, so last semester was my internship semester, so I was just working. I had no lectures. Mm -hmm. um, this semester is going to start on the 1st of March, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to start my online lectures again. Mm -hmm. But it was right. honestly uh, really <laughs> Uh, how do you see online learning, education online? Um, I think definitely education can't stop because of COVID, so it's a good alternative. But for me, it's, it's really difficult. Like, it's very hard to convince a college student to get up and get out of bed and be focused on a laptop screen all day. Like, it's my eyes hurt. <laughs> it's just yeah. tiring all day. Yes, yeah. yes. So you prefer uh, uh, interaction, uh, real life interaction. Definitely. Definitely, yes. And I miss like the small conversations you have with people before class. I miss like going to the cafeteria with my friends. So, I mean, and so. yeah, exactly. But I mean, your education can't stop. So what other option do we have? It, it's mm -hmm. uh, What are the pros and cons, in your opinion, of education online? So um, the pros for me are um, definitely waking up later. 
So now I don't have to wake up as early to get That's ready. Early. I yeah, definitely. Wake up five minutes before class and I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Um, True. The difficulties, um, especially in Egypt, sometimes um, the internet connection isn't always the best. So sometimes it's hard. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to manage, like, uh, especially because I have two other sisters in school. So all of us, like, managing our classes at the same time in the same house, it gets a bit tough sometimes. Online, all of you online. Yeah. yeah. So, right. Uh, other, so his classes are always so loud all the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Well, uh, <laughs> Right, Amina, um, finally, my last question to you. Uh, what are your plans? What are your dreams uh, for uh, the future? How do you see the future on the personal and the career level? Um, Career-wise, I'm honestly not sure, but I definitely know I want to do something that is going to make a change, especially here in Egypt. Like That's why I decided to travel in the first place to gather as much knowledge as I can and come back and implement it here. So I'm not really sure which field I want to work in, but I know I definitely want to do something that makes a difference or helps this country in any way. Um, okay. On a personal, like, yeah, maybe do my master's after I graduate and then start working. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, all, all the best of luck. And uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Nazi. Thank you so much for having me. So that was uh, Amina Helmi, an Egyptian student studying in Germany. Living and studying abroad is a unique experience. Amina told us about this experience, uh, how she adapted to a new culture, uh, meeting new people from different cultures, adapting and becoming independent. Another success story in our program. Stay tuned for more success stories on today's youth uh, on Night TV International. Thank you.